The, the systems generally cap themselves at a certain number of people because they set aside a budget for how much they want to pay for the feed-in tariff. And then they say, okay, we have a million dollars this year to offset, this will be your feed-in tariff. So that means we can afford to pay 2,500 people to join the program this year. Now the problem with that is, what you get is 2,500 speculators joining the next day. And all the people who are just genuinely interested in putting up solar power on the roof because mm -hmm. it's the right thing to do, they don't get in. Or they get in at the end and their paperwork takes six months. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would suggest is, one of the things they got right here is that the feed-in tariff is paid off on the electricity bill. So there's no cap. There's a little thing right now, it's 0.102 cents on my bill per month mm -hmm. to pay for all the feed-in tariff. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing I would suggest is figure out a way that you don't have to cap it on a yearly basis. Or if you're going to cap it on a yearly basis, try to spread it out so that the people who really can take advantage of this, the average homeowner, gets a chance. Number two, definitely tier your program so that the hardest systems, the most expensive systems to install get the best tariff. So here in Ontario, we're paying 80 cents. Mm -hmm. Everybody says it's outrageous. It's really not that bad. New Jersey is effectively 72 cents. California is zero, right? But it works because the electricity is so expensive. Yes. And you get yeah. the federal system, mm -hmm. right? So tier your system so that the average homeowner gets a chance because there's this huge number of people that just want to do this and can't afford it. And if it becomes economically attractive, they will. Figure out how much it costs to install in Florida. It's going to be less than here because you're going to be a lot of Plus, and the last bit of advice I'll give you, the one thing they didn't do here, and I'm with two lines with this, uh, the New Jersey system is a good example of going the other way. In New Jersey, what they do is they run your meter backwards. Okay? Same in California. California. And then you basically pay whatever the leftover amount is for your power, which is great. Um, and people love that idea. Everybody that walks in here, they just immediately get that, oh, my, my bill will go to zero? That's fantastic. Or even sell it back to the... Or sell it back. Oh. The problem with that is you can never predict how much money you're going to make off your pan because those electricity rates can go up and down. Like in, here in Ontario, they've doubled, basically, in the last three years. Mm -hmm. um, so in Ontario, I'm actually thinking that we should introduce something like that because that gives people a hedge against the inflation on their electricity, which I think is good. The downside to having the meter turned back, or there's a technical upside as well, I should just mention. Um, we have to install two meters in Ontario. One that says this is how much your panels have made, and this is how much you've used in your house. And that actually is extremely costly because we have to hire an electrician to pull the power, right? There is absolutely no reason you can't do that inside the meter. Okay, you can buy meters right now from many companies in the United States that will just figure all of that out for you. And California started with their million the smart meters. The million house roof, right. Mm -hmm. And we're doing smart metering here too. So if you're going to have the, the, a system where the meter turns backwards, or you're just going to pay people for every kilowatt, which is how the feed-in tariff works, mm -hmm. um, make sure that the technical barrier that is low. You don't have to go and rewire your house to get it done. That's the other thing. Now, the downside to, to the net metering concept and the upside to the pure tariff, and it's a huge upside, I can tell you exactly right now how much money you're going to make in 20 years. Mm -hmm. I can tell you your profit margin, uh -huh. and I can tell you what that is equivalent to in terms of an inflation or the interest rate. So if inflation is 1%, which it is in Ontario, a little bit higher, and this is making 7%, making 6% of your net, it's better than any bank account in the world. Right? And that is the upside to the fit. I think there might be a beautiful middle ground where we turn back your meter so your bill goes down because everybody loves it. They just love it, seeing their meter spin backwards. <laughs> yes. And we'll give you 50 cents a kilowatt. Okay? And I don't know what power prices are in Florida. You'd have to figure out what the numbers are. But I think the and combination of those two points. would make people love it completely, even a little bit more than here. By the way, the pure fit is Outside of residential, pure fit is the only way to go, right? Because if you're a farmer and I come to you and I say, I'm going to put up, it's going to cost us $72,000, I'm going to put up this enormous system, it's going to pay you $9,500 a year, here's how the numbers work out, here's how much you'll pay for your loan. They just look at it, they can go directly to the bank and get the loan in five minutes because they own 100 acres of land, they can borrow against the land for nothing. What do farmers do? They borrow capital to buy equipment to make money, 
Mm -hmm. They just get it immediately. There's, it's a no-brainer. So again, the residential program should, could, and I really recommend be very different than the rest of the program. For people who are doing commercial, even lightweight, like a farmer with 20 panels in his backyard, he should be on a very different system than the feed-in tariff that you aim at downtown residential like this. And you know, mm -hmm. you can think about it, you can look at it, you can study it. And of course, the other thing that you might want to consider, which we're working to get into on, is the case, which is a loan that you take from your local bank, but they collect the money back mm -hmm. through taxes. So that means the panels belong to the property, not to you. And that's a huge, huge, huge thing. Because that absolutely every single person that walks in goes, what if I sell the house? And the answer is, we don't know. We know that you can give the panels to your next owner, but how much they'll pay you for it, we don't know. So the PACE program, which came out of California, now it's very popular. Basically, the loan that you get is from your bank, just like it would be anyway, mm -hmm. but the loan payments come out of the property taxes. So it has to be done on a municipal level, or whoever runs your local property taxes. But the advantage there is, if somebody comes and buys your house, they know exactly what they're getting. They don't have to pay you any extra for the, for the panels, because it's owned by the city, Mm -hmm. And new, the bank never has to worry because it's coming from the ta tax roll. Oh, so you can flip the house, you can change oh, owners, okay. you can Very leave the house empty. Uh -huh. They don't care. They'll get their payment, makes the bank happy, and you get your system for free, no cost, makes them happy. So I highly, highly, highly recommend the PACE program. And we're, like I said, we're trying to get them here. Mm -hmm. We're looking for creative finance. So that's my advice. Very good. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. We're so glad we waited. We've learned so much. Yes, we have. I love talking. Oh.